How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie, an animated visual book summary by Alexander Sandalis. Part 2. Six Ways to Make People Like You. Chapter 4. An Easy Way to Become a Good Conversationalist. So no matter what your opinion of Oprah Winfrey is, she has created the opportunity for herself to look into the eyes of the most influential people, the most heartbreaking stories behind them and the most uplifting behind them. If you only listen to one part of this video, let it be this. What I learned in all of those thousands of interviews is that there is a common denominator in our human experience. And when I go into any interview, no matter how intimidated I might be or how, oh my gosh, I've never talked to this person before, I know that that's, what's, that's the line of truth that's running through. Everybody wants to know, did you hear me? And did what I say matter? And that's in your own personal relationships, that's with your children, that's every argument you've ever had, is really about, are you hearing me? So fundamentally, the desire to be heard, the desire to be validated, the desire to know that what you're doing is meaningful in the world is, is something that we all hold for ourselves. So that's it. Everybody just wants to be heard. That's the crux of this chapter. Listen. Simple as it is, I'll show you why most don't do it. The chronic kicker, even the most violent critic, will frequently soften and be subdued in the presence of a patient, sympathetic listener. A listener who will be silent while the irate fault finder dilates like a king cobra and spews the poison out of his system. To illustrate, here's a story um, of one of the most vicious customers in New York telephone company history. And there was this gentleman, basically um, the type of person you do not want to be on the end of a phone call with. This guy was throwing threats, he was abusing verbal, abusing the customer service, he refused to pay any charges that were declared false, he wrote letters to the newspapers trying to tarnish the image of the company, he filed so many complaints and actually started several suits against the telephone company. So this company had to do something. I had to do something they haven't done before. So the company used one of its most skillful customer service representatives to interview this, this gentleman. Now on the first phone call, this representative listened to this man pour his heart out and pour all his, his negative energy for nearly three hours. And while this, the, the customer service, he sympathized with him and he listened. He didn't interrupt. He related to the experiences. And in total, he had ended up interviewing him for four times and for pretty much the entire time the actual reason for his call was never addressed it was all it was a tirade of other complaints but by the fourth call all his bills had been paid and for the first time in history of his difficulties with the company he voluntarily withdrew all his complaints and it had all been sorted now this gentleman who, who called so relentlessly had seen himself as type some type of crusade and you know defending public defending the public rights against uh, certain exploitation that he thought he was being used against but in the reality what he really wanted was a feeling of importance just like Oprah was talking about he got this feeling of importance at first by kicking and complaining but as soon as he got his feeling of importance from the representative his imagined grievances vanished his ego had been satisfied, so he had no more quarrels. No one really listened to him at the start. And that's what happens at the start if you, if you don't have a real strong character, if, you, if you're not real value driven and you're more reactive than responsive. This is what some people are like. And this is one way to deal with them. A journalist uh, back about 50 to 100 years ago, Isaac Markinson, who interviewed hundreds of celebrities, declared that many people fail to make a favorable impression because they don't listen attentively. They have been so much concerned with what they are going to say next that they do not keep their ears open. Very important people have told me that they prefer good listeners to good talkers, but the ability to listen seems rarer than almost any other good trait. If you want to know how to make people shun you and laugh at you behind your back and even despise you, I'll give you the recipe. Never listen to anyone. Talk incessantly about yourself. If you have an idea while the other person is talking, don't wait for him or her to finish. Interrupt right in, in the middle of the sentence. 
and everybody knows someone who does that. Unfortunately, I personally try not to associate with them, but when you're stuck in that situation, step back and listen. Just sit there. I think that's a good way to practice. If you aspire to be a good conversationalist, be an attentive listener. To be interesting, be interested. Ask questions that other persons will enjoy answering. Encourage them to talk about themselves and their accomplishments. Remember that the people you are talking to are a hundred times more interested in themselves and their wants and problems than they are in you and your problems. A person's toothache means more to that person than a famine in China which kills a million people. Think of that the next time you start a conversation. This whole thing is reflected in the 48 Laws of Power in a different way and with different stories and different um, phrasing. but. This is the 48 Laws of Power right here. This is so brilliant to be able to see the parallels between the two books. Please watch them side by side. This, if you're watching those videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And you've heard me say this before. To be an attentive listener is so crucial. Principle 4. Be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. If you've made it this far through the video to the end, thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. It's really important to me that you follow me on social media, but only if. If you actually intend on watching and or reading the content I produce, do not subscribe just because you think I'm okay. Hold yourself to higher standards to only learn from those you think you can attain great value from.